What is up YouTube? This is Nick Ross here with Body of Legends, all right? This is the answer video to my Q&A video that I left for you guys. I posted a video up about a week ago telling you to leave your comments and questions down below in the comment section, okay? And I was gonna make a video answering all of your questions that you left. If you did not leave a question, it is too late now, but if you want me to do it very soon, then I'll do another Q&A video for you to leave comments maybe within the next two weeks. Kind of depends how you guys feel about it. But anyways, these are the answers to the questions that you left on the video. So let's get started, all right? And uh, this might be a pretty long video, so I might just make it one big video, split it up into part one, part two. Depends how long it is, but first question comes from Nabil Al. Nabil Al, something like that. Uh, how tall are you? I'm about five, nine and a half. 5'10", give or take on a good day. When I squat, I can almost go down to 5'8 and a half. Um, squat pretty heavy, so it does make me short a little bit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, typically 5'9 um, and a half. Uh, another question from Nabel Al. What's the Cayman Islands like? It's beautiful, my friend. It is so beautiful. Um, the weather is forever sunny. There's always a nice breeze, so it's not super, super damn hot. Um, the water, of course, is crystal clear. I can look right down in the water, see the bottom of the ocean. I can look at all the fish. Um, the people are pretty friendly. Crime is extremely low. You know, you have, you know, every, every, ever so often you get, you know, a killing or something. I mean, you know, it's the world, you know, no place is crime free, but crime here is still pretty low. I'm not going to lie. Um, food is expensive. I'm gonna say that that's probably the only downside of the Cayman Islands food is pretty expensive if you live here you know if I go to the store and buy a gallon of milk it's like six dollars CI which CI is our local currency converted to US uh, that's like seven dollars and twenty cents um, US for a gallon of milk as opposed to being in the US I think you guys milk are like three ninety nine or something so pretty expensive but beyond that it's pretty good um, question from my brother Kali Fu. This guy made my outro, man. He's a cool guy, man. I'm gonna shout him out. Kali Fu. Um, might put your channel in the description somewhere, so subscribe to that guy. Do you stay within a certain range of sodium while cutting? I do, my friend. I do. While cutting, I try to stay typically low between 1,200 milligrams to 1,500 milligrams. Um, now, keep in mind, I said cutting. Bulking right now, sodium is not a big thing that I'm looking at. I'm just gonna consume all the ketchup and all the sugar and, well not sugar, but salt that I want and not really pay much mind to it. Now, of course, I don't wanna go too overboard, um, but that's on my bulk. Cutting now, sodium is, of course, um, you have to be on point with your sodium because if you don't know, consuming sodium, AKA salt and seasoning and um, you know, canned foods, that's gonna make your body retain water. Retaining water on your physique is going to make you look watery, which means that can take away from muscle definition. You don't want that now, do you? You want to look great. So you have to pay mind to your sodium. Um, I would say if I'm going to prep for a show, I'll cut sodium out completely maybe, you know, the last two or three days before the show. Um, and, but even then, I mean, I'll still throw like, you know, a tablespoon of salt in with one meal. So sodium isn't completely diminished, but it's extremely reduced maybe two days before a show. But yeah, cutting typically 1,200, 1,500 milligrams a day. Um, another question from Nabel Al. How do your parents feel about your bodybuilding success? How do they feel? <laughs> Let's start with my dad. He doesn't know what's going on. He has no idea what bodybuilding really is. I went away from my show in Dallas. He didn't know what it was. He didn't know what was going on. He didn't really have an opinion because he didn't understand. Now, you know, he's he's up there in age. You know, he's uh, pushing 60 years old. So, you know, coming from an island, the Grand Cayman, Cayman Islands, you know, bodybuilding is not known here. You know, you have a handful of guys. I can count five guys, legit only five guys, including myself, that are legit honest bodybuilders in the Cayman Islands that compete five out of a population of 50,000 people. So people down here don't know bodybuilding, at least the older generation doesn't know bodybuilding. So my dad being part of the older generation, he doesn't really truly know what bodybuilding is. So me going away competing, he didn't really understand it. He probably thinks I was stripping, I was, you know, some kind of, um, I don't even know what he thought. I mean, you know, he, he knew that I got a trophy, but you know, there's just a lack of understanding there in his part, but I guess he's proud. 
Uh, my mom, she's kind of on the same page, but she has somewhat more of an understanding, I guess, because she watches my videos, so more of an understanding on her part. You know, she came with me to Dallas, and she actually saw the show, so she has a bit more understanding, so she's also proud. But again, you know, there's just, they don't truly understand what bodybuilding is, but who really does? I mean, you have to actually be a bodybuilder to understand bodybuilding, so someone looking on the outside in would never really truly understand it unless they actually walk the walk of a bodybuilder. Uh, another question from Kali Fu. Do you even lift? <laughs> uh, I try to, you know, sometimes, not a lot. Uh, question from Angel Hernandez. Breaking fat loss plateaus are cheat days good for metabolism boosts. Breaking fat loss plateaus. Um, you know, well, never really plateau with fat loss, to be honest. I mean, fat loss kind of almost came easy for me because I knew what I was doing. But typically, if you can't lose fat, then you're going to have to reduce your calories or increase your intensity in the gym or just maybe get more rest. But, you know, if, if you're burning fat and you're consuming 1,800 calories a day and your fat loss suddenly stops, but you expect to still burn fat while still consuming 1,800 calories a day, then that's kind of ridiculous, right? You cannot consume 1,800 calories a day um, and continue to burn fat till you get down 2%. No, you're going to have to continuously cut the calories back as a fat loss is being achieved. You can't stick to one, one caloric range and expect to burn all your fat. You know, you're going to have to taper the calories down as the fat goes down because a new body, you know, when you have less body fat, that's a different body. So that different body requires a different caloric um, need to continue burning fat. Um, but you don't even have to burn, you don't even have to reduce calories, you know, just maybe increase your intensity in the gym, you know, do more reps, do more sets, um, make one set last longer, which is going to in turn burn more calories so you can burn more fat. As opposed to cheat days for boosting metabolism, you know what, yeah, you know, when you're cutting and you're on, you know, an 1800 calorie diet, you know, throwing one day a week of maybe 2500 calories, that's going to give your body more calories to work with, which in turn can boost your metabolism on a cut. So, you know, you know, bulking, I mean, your calories are already up. So, you know, why have a cheat day when you're already 500 calories over where you're supposed to be? It doesn't really make sense. Um, I want to run to you and get away. I want to hide away from you, but I can't escape. They say it's your own child.